Well, hey, listen, this is the last Sunday of the week of the year. Crazy. We are done with 2017. Um, I went by fast. That was quick. Um, I'm sure you guys have a lot that you guys could uh, ponder about and, and wonder about uh, about your 2017. And I think today is a perfect day to do that. Um, I This week has been a bit crazy, but uh, nevertheless, I've been thinking a, a little bit about how the year went, the, the good and bad that I got to experience, and it's mostly good, so that's a good thing. Uh, uh, but now we are getting ready to enter a new year, and I couldn't, I couldn't end the year without encouraging you guys to do something that I believe I live my life by. Uh, it's just a rule of thumb, um, almost, and... The more the years go by, the more the time goes by that I, that I think this way, um, the more exciting life becomes. Um, and so the title of today's message is Empty Your Cup. And, and again, I just want to <clears throat> go into a new year with this uh, word of encouragement um, that I didn't make up. This is nothing I came up with. I'm not that smart. Um, in fact, this is something that Jesus himself uh, modeled, and then the Apostle Paul writes to the Philippians and, and reference to this. And so I want us all to uh, <coughs> open up our Bibles and pull up the app on your phone because I think this is important for us to, to take a view, to take, to take a look at, and that's in Philippians chapter 2. And so today, uh, I just want us to, um, to, yeah, to enter a new year with, a, with an encouragement that I think uh, we'll do a couple of things. We'll make your life better, and we'll make the life of those around you better as well. So this encouragement today, or what we'll, we'll talk about today, what we'll dive into today. Well, number one, make your life better, and number two, make the life of those around you better as well. So before I start and before we read, I want to uh, just open up with a word of prayer. And um, yeah, why don't we do that? Gracious Father, thank you so much. For allowing this gathering to be happening right now, God, in this moment, we get to be here uh, under this, this roof, in this, inside of this building, uh, gathered on this last Sunday of the year, worshiping you, Jesus, singing songs to you and about you, and, and now just being in fellowship with one another. And I pray that in these next 25 to 30 minutes as I share uh, this encouragement, God, that I've been uh, uh, deeply encouraged by uh, with my brothers and sisters, that you would be uh, speaking through me, God, and that we would all walk away from here ready to empty our cups on a daily basis. So, Father, may the year to come be one where we are constantly looking for ways to empty our cup. And as I explain uh, this, this concept, Father, I pray that I would be clear. I pray that I would be gracious in my words. I pray that I would be an encouragement to those who are listening. So I just pray this in Christ's name, amen and amen. So guys, let's take a look at this passage, which is pretty key uh, for our faith and, and what we know um, or what we ought to understand about Christ and how we are viewed in him. So um, Jen mentioned something about identity this, this morning, and I just think it's so important to, I, I was sharing with a friend yesterday, I made so many friends being at the, at the coffee shop, some of you guys, uh, you guys don't know, but... Um, we're working on opening up a, an actual coffee um, or cafe in, in Koreatown. And, um, so I'm a pastor during the weekends and I'm a business manager with me. But listen to this. Uh, it's just been fascinating how I get to, I get to meet people. And, and I made this friend named Brandon who, you know, I, he's been coming around for the last four weeks. And he comes almost every day. And um, he goes for a walk every morning. So when I'm opening up at 8 o'clock in the morning, he's always walking by. And then once I'm like settled in at like 8.30, he like is walking back and, and then always, always orders this tea that I made for him. Um, I kind of just invented it, but anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a Brandon and I thing. But yesterday, you know, I, I don't know if this guy ever, for, for four weeks I've been interacting with him. We kind of became friends on social media. He, he's, he's a coach for a soccer club, an adult a co-ed soccer club um, that's been around since 2007. And, and two days ago he came by and gifted me a jersey. Uh, pretty sick jersey that, that, that they're going to be wearing this upcoming season. And, um, you know, I was just like, dude, thanks. And yesterday he came by. But I don't know that I, I don't remember that in these four weeks, in the many times I've talked to him, I don't remember ever telling him that I was a Christian. But yesterday, 
Um, I was like, okay, dude, you got to witness somehow. And so yesterday, I remember just sitting there, and, and, and he was like, dude, um, <coughs> he said something. We were talking about our wives, and, and I said, well, you know, we, we have to be... We have to be careful to, 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 um, to make sure that we stay married and that fidelity is a priority in our marriages because families today determine society tomorrow. And anyone that knows anything about sociology knows that this is the case. Uh, family today determines society tomorrow. And so if families are messed up today, uh, we're going to you know, raise a whole bunch of messed up kids that will mess up society. And so that's how it works. And, and, and so we were talking about that and I said to him, you know what? I don't know if I told you or not, but I'm actually, I'm actually a Christian. I'm actually a pastor. And he goes like, and he just looks at me and I say, you know, I, I, don't, I try not to mention that first. I try to be uh, Christ-like first before I ever say that I'm a Christian. And then hopefully by the time I, I confess that I'm a Christian to anyone that's around me, hopefully they're like, oh, I couldn't have, uh, you know, hopefully they're, they're like, oh, yeah, I can see how X, Y, and Z was happening. Or um, it would be a good time to be, to be checked and to be like, dude. You sure don't act like one, you know, or, or, or whatnot. So, anyway, so yesterday I was <coughs> sitting with them. <coughs> we were chatting about what our lives would look like or what the surroundings uh, of our lives would look like if we constantly gave ourselves on to others. And then it reminded me of this passage uh, that I'm going to read to you guys in verse 3, uh, Philippians chapter 2. And um, this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church. They were having a little bit of trouble getting along with one another, and so it's, it happens often in churches. But this is the, the words that Paul writes to the church in Philippi. He says to them, verse 3, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Boy, that's hard to do. I'm, I'm the first one to confess. That's really tough to do. Verse 4, Don't look out only for your own interests. Another hard thing to do. But take interest in others too. Now, he's encouraging them to basically be selfless. And then he doesn't stop there. Like I said, we don't, I, Paul didn't come up with this. I didn't come up with this. This is something that Christ himself displayed. And he says, verse 5, You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. And verse 6, he says, though, And this was the attitude he had. Though he was God... He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Verse 7. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. We talked about earlier in the month of December. We talked about how Christ gave up his eternal state to come and dwell with human beings when he was born. That's the story of Christmas. And so we talk about this is what Christ did. He was divine, yet he gives up his privileges. And then he took a humble position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. And lastly, verse 8, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. The most accurate picture of emptying your cup is the one that Christ himself displayed when he left glory, when he purposely rid himself of all the glorious state he was in to come and be born as a human being to then die a death that would save humanity. That is what emptying your cup is all about. It's saying, hey, I see a need, I have a resource, and I will be intentional about giving myself onto that. And so we're going to see a few steps here today. And this is what I... Next slide. Emptying your cup. So four things emptying your cup is. Emptying your cup, number one, means taking every opportunity to do good. Emptying your cup in 2018 is going to mean every day, every day someone's in need of you being gracious to them. Every day someone's in need of getting a kind gesture from you. Every day there is an opportunity to do good to someone else. Every day. As long as you're alive, as long as you're around other human beings, there is an opportunity to do good. And so my encouragement for this upcoming year with this uh, topic of, or this, this thing called emptying your cup is take every opportunity you can. Be aware be alive, be awakened to it. And that's why it's so important to live, to be in the moment. 
You know, yesterday it was so funny. We were uh, last night. We were my, my wife was making some chicken with um, with grandma, and they were they were cooking up the, the, the chicken. And, and I remember just watching grandma. She was sitting right in front of me, and chicken was about to come out. And we were gonna try it, and I just remember thinking, like, man, this is like this moment. I need to take in. There's a grandma here in front of me that was gone for a month, and I missed like crazy. But she was right in front of me. And I remember just feeling like I, this is the moment, and constantly I'm trying to remind myself to live. In the moment now, that's hard for any one of us, especially because we're so driven. Everything about us, right? School, work, um, social influence, all sorts of things are pointing towards future. They're always kind of reminding you of, like, hey, remember that there's a tomorrow, and that's why 401 401ks exist. That's why you know the the, the hopes for a, a the, your dream job tomorrow exists because we're so it's so easy to just be thinking about tomorrow, and that's a good thing. That can be a good thing at its appropriate moment, but every day, if we don't, we're not in the moment, every day we could potentially miss the opportunity of doing good. And uh, same writer, Paul, writes to the church in Galatians, he says, don't grow weary of doing what is good. That's what Galatians uh, chapter 6, verse 9 emphasizes. So don't grow weary of doing good. And I say this all the time. I've had this conversation with perhaps my mom. I, I even had it a little bit with my wife on, on the way here, and I said, <clears throat> Never determine how good you will be because of other people's response. Never let someone else's response or the fear of people's response determine just how good you're going to be. If you can do something good, even if you know people will respond in a negative way, if you can do good, I think you should take the chance. And, it's, and again, it's all up, wrapped up in the story of the gospel because Christ knew there would be rejection of him. In fact, the same people he was, he was being crucified by was the same people he was dying for. And so the opportunity to do good is going to be present every day. And don't let other people determine just how good you will be, just how much good you will do. Don't ever let someone else stop you from doing what is good. If you have the opportunity Go for it. If you can be a comfort and encouragement to someone else, if you can facilitate someone else's life for just a moment, take the opportunity. Don't worry about the results. Don't worry about the response of how people will react to your kindness. No, 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 no. Your kindness should be determined only by you. And so in this year, I want to encourage everyone that emptying your cup is taking every chance you get to do good. Every chance, every moment. And I'm, pro I'm pretty sure you can probably start tonight or you can probably start tomorrow. But take the chance. This is how we make the world better around us. I tell you guys all the time. The hope of the world, the only hope of the world, and I would not be a pastor and I would not insist on um, um, pastoring my entire life if I didn't really think that the hope of the world is actually the church. It's the church, the people that have the best news ever, ever, are the people that can make the biggest difference. We just need to be awakened to the fact that, number two, emptying your cup means you understand that you're only here for a short period. And this is this hits home pretty hard for me because a lot of what I've done in the last maybe year and a half, to two years, is that, is, dude, I'm not going to be here forever. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against a retirement fund. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against being... Uh, uh, you know, careful. I'm not, I'm not against that. But I also understand that, wait a minute, I'm not going to be here forever. I mean, like, in my life, or in an internal state, when it's a eternal perspective, if, if this is eternity from here to there, while I'm going to be on this earth is probably like this much. And then there's eternity. But Jesus put it this way in, in Matthew chapter chapter 19. I want to read it to you guys just to kind of hit, <coughs> I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 19. To just kind of uh, zoom in into what I'm talking about. Jesus put it this way. Talking about it amongst many other things. He says, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal Store your treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and, and steal. Wherever your treasure is, the desires of your heart will also be. 
Guys, we're not going to be here forever. And so it's great to plan for your, for your future. It's great to plan for, you know, when you're going to be 60, when you're going to be 50. It's great. It's, it's important, I think. But it's not everything. And so every moment, this ties in with number one, every moment you get to, to, to do good, to share something that you have, to give yourself onto other people, do it. Take the chance. You're not going to be on this side of the planet forever. We're heading towards eternity. And that which we do, that Christ himself commanded us to do, which was love our neighbor as ourselves, is the only thing we're taking to the other side with us. You're not taking absolutely anything with you. So emptying your cup means understanding that concept. Dude, I could be gone tomorrow. I could be gone tomorrow. Just yesterday, we were, I was listening to radio, I think it was like Coast 103.5, and they were talking about all the many artists that died this year. Well, you know, a lot of them older, and a lot of them, uh, like the Lincoln Park singer, that, what was it, Chester? Chester was his name? Um, they're gone this year. They're not going to be here at midnight. You know, some of us have some closer people that passed this year. We're not going to be here forever. So understanding that frees you to think, wait a minute. If it's between sharing something that I have or keeping it for later, understanding the, the concept of emptying up your cup means giving it away, sharing it with others. Because now this could be a scary concept. I get it, but number three, emptying your cup means, in order to empty up your cup, you should understand that that means you will trust God with your life. The reason why I am so, it's so easy for me now to just do what I think might be good for others regardless of what that means for me personally is because I wholeheartedly wholeheartedly think this way. I think if I am able to respond to a need or to a cause, even when that's hard, even when that's difficult, I do trust that while I'm thinking of others, God is thinking about me. While I'm thinking about others, God is concerned about me. And I've seen this over and over in my life. Over and over in my life. Like, wow, I, I, why am I, you know, some people have told me, man, things are like, they, they seem like they're so easy for you. And I come in and I think about that, I'm like, dude, they kind of are. But it's because a lot of my, at least adult life, I've spent thinking, how can I do good on others? And the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be serious, any time I've planned anything where I'm being so self-centered, so selfish, is when things go south. And my wife is a witness. Because now I understand emptying my cup, the life that Christ wants us to live as Christians is one that gives themselves out. That's, we're just following his example. In fact, the word Christian means follower of Christ or imitator of him or you know, the student of him. And so Christ said, as I am, so should you be. And boy, he lived a life that emptied out his cup, for sure. Did not hold back. Knew that people's response was going to be foul. And that didn't stop him. That didn't stop him from dying on that cross. And in essence, freeing us. Who will probably not respond properly. Or haven't responded to that kindness. So, emptying your cup means you will trust God with your life. That's what Jesus said. Hey, don't worry about it. What are you worried about tomorrow for? You're not even there. You don't even know what happens tomorrow. And that's, just, that's what Matthew 6, 25 and 26 is emphasizing. Jesus is talking about worry and anxiety. He's like, hey, what are you guys freaking out about? You don't even know if you're going to make it tomorrow. And he says, do not worry. I take care of the birds in the air. And then he says, which again agrees Totally with what uh, the Bible teaches. We are God's most precious creation. Nothing, nothing is above the human beings he created. At least to him, there isn't anything above. And so that's why Jesus says, hey, if I feed the birds, you guys, to God, are more important than birds. So I will take care of you too. So don't be afraid to give yourself on to others. Thinking, well, if I give this away, I'm not going to have for tomorrow. That's not true. 
Tomorrow, it is Him that takes care of it. Not us. Not us. And, and, and I've met both people on, on, on both ends of the spectrum. People that just think, I have to look out for my tomorrow because no one else will. And they live these uptight lives and they're always worried and they're always anxious. And sometimes they even cheat and lie to get their way for tomorrow. And I would look at that, I look at that behavior and I say, yeah, you have no choice. You have no choice. If you're not trusting your creator for tomorrow, you have no choice but to be freaked out about tomorrow. Because think about it, you show up to a test that you haven't studied or you weren't even told what was going to be on the test, how are you going to feel? Freaked out. It's like, teacher, you didn't even tell me what's happening. What do you mean we have a test? Remember pop-up quizzes? Did you guys ever have those? It's like the worst thing back when I was a kid. Pop-up quiz, like, or what were they called, honey? Pop quizzes. Pop quizzes, right? Or pop-up, pop-up, I'm pop just saying. Like, pop-up. All right, new generation of secret surprise quizzes, pop-up. Um, of course you'd be freaked out. Of course you'd be freaked out. But when you live a life that says, God knows tomorrow, he's there. In fact, he finished my life, he finished planning my life, and then he allowed me to be born, which should give us total peace. That's this concept. Empty your cup means you gotta trust God. Gotta live a life that says He's there tomorrow. He's in control. Nothing's gonna freak me out. And if things go get a little scary, He'll catch me in my fear and He'll hold me tight and He'll secure me forever. I always say this God fixed the biggest problem He had, which was sin. His provision for that was Christ on the cross. What else am I doing? If you were to tell me the worst thing that could happen to me is physical death, because eternal death he secured me from, then no biggie. Lastly, emptying your cup means you will be willing to be an instrument for God to bless others. For God to bless others. I think that the most exciting thing or the most purposeful thing you could do is to understand that you were created to benefit others. That's the most exciting. That thing will wake you up in the mornings. It's like a parent. I'm a dad now. But sometimes, sometimes, when they've, they've been good to us, but sometimes I wake up thinking, man, Lucas and Mateo, I'm going to kick rocks for them today. You know, my boys, I got to do everything right today. I got to make sure I don't do anything illegal. I got to make sure I do all things with honesty because my kids depend on me. And when you live your life like that, man, I tell you, you wake up. Feelings of feeling inferior or feelings of feeling like I'm insignificant, those things go away when you understand. No, wait. God wants to use my life as an instrument to bless other people so that other people can benefit from my life. And I say this all the time, man. Whether it's you're studying to be an attorney, whether it's to be studying to be a doctor, whatever it may be, your life could end up being a huge blessing to the people around you. If you just understand the concept that you were created to do good unto others. In fact, Ephesians teaches us with the with the with the with the with the click of a uh, of the gospel in it. Ephesians chapter two verse ten in essence says, "Hey, you were saved. God freed you from the power of death and sin, so that you would do the good things He planned beforehand for you to do." So we arrive. We arrive to our faith, to our, com to our communion with God, our Creator, with an already prepackaged good pack of deeds to give out to others. That's what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 teaches. And we're not just here by accident. God did not go through all the trouble, put His Son through all that He put Him through just for us to live a pretty life, have a secure home, and be safe all the time. No, 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 no. He frees us from sin, but then He has an assignment for us that will bless the people around us. So picture your life in 2018 for a second. What would it look like if every day you were committed to emptying your cup? If every day you were committed to, I, I can do good to somebody today. Somebody could use my smile. Somebody could use my words of encouragement. Someone could use a meal that I have that's extra. 
Someone can use my help today. That is what empty your cup is all about. Is thinking every day I have an opportunity to benefit someone else. And that's why I love, 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 love the concept or the idea that we get to do life Monday through Saturday. We don't even gather here. But I love the fact that we get together on Sunday, be encouraged. And then in essence, I, I kind of see Sundays as you kind of go huddle up, you pack your bag, you reload on your ammo, and then you get Monday through Saturday to put out the light that shines through the love of Christ in us to put it right out to the people that are far from Him. That's how I'm excited about church. That's how I'm excited about the idea of a Christian gathering. <clears throat> It's because this should be a place where you come, you reload, and then you're hungry to get to Monday. You're so thirsty to get to Monday so that you can put out the love of Christ onto others. That is what emptying your cup is all about. That is what Christ did for us. When he didn't hold on to his glory, he could have. But he didn't. And he was born. And then he lived a life that we couldn't live. And he died a death that we deserved. Boy, did he empty out his cup. And so can we be examples of that? Can we try our best to follow that? Obviously, I'm not asking you to die for anyone. I hope you don't have to die for anyone anytime soon. <coughs> Bless you. But I am encouraging you to find a way to be a blessing to someone else. Find a way. Uh, and uh, so many people are like, oh, you do so many things. You know, your life must be exciting now. It's not that I do so many things. I do one thing. One thing. And that is I try to empty out my cup every day. I do one thing. It comes out in all different sorts of ways, right? The county, the pastor, I pray for people. I get to encourage people. I counsel people sometimes. I'm a dad to Lucas. I, you know, I take my dad with me to pick up lumber because that would, that's, you know, he likes to be with me. I hug my wife, I kiss her, I try to make sure she's close by and she understands that someone loves her. So it's not that I do it, I do one thing. I try to empty out my cup every day. And then it comes out in all sorts of things. Live your life that way. In 2018. That is my encouragement. That is my heart, that is my heart's desire. As a pastor, as a Christian, as just a human being. I would love for people, all of us, to join up in this, this spree of emptying out our cups every day, no matter what the outcome may be. But we believe that we do this for the glory of God so that He could be known. And that's why we do it. So let us bow our heads, <coughs> let us close our eyes, and in this last just couple minutes that we'll be together, I want us to think about a way that we can start emptying our cup for all of 2018. Maybe there's one thing you can do daily. Maybe there's a couple of things you can do daily. Maybe there's a thing that you can do monthly or weekly that you know someone needs and that you can do it. Be intentional. Be intentional about understanding that you were created to be a blessing to someone else. Be aware of that. Be conscious of that. That God loved you and adopted you into his family so that he could put you right out in the game. And that you could keep witnessing about them. So as we have our heads closed, <coughs> our heads bowed, our eyes closed. And as you think about how it is that you can empty out your cup in this upcoming year, I just want to say an end of the year prayer <clears throat> and pray for you also. Gracious Father, this year you just Many of us got to live through a lot of happy moments and even some painful moments. But God, you were present and you were aware every single time. 
You never left us. You were never a stranger. You were never distant. God, you were merciful and kind all year long. You held on to us. You cared for us. You protected us. Father, 2017, we saw a lot of natural disaster. A lot of people died with the hurricanes hitting down in Houston, in Puerto Rico, in Miami. There's a lot of people right now that are still homeless because of these. And there were fires very close to us, just a few miles north. And there's a lot of people still homeless and deeply affected because of it. And we hurt with them. We feel for them and we, we take this moment and pray for them. But also in that, God, we understand and that awakens us to the fact that we were watched over. We were protected. We didn't lose our home. We still have shelter. We have a lot of food. God, this was all you this year. Everything, everything that we got to benefit it, and everything that was good came from you. And every challenge, God, we were never alone. So I just want to say thank you. As we finish the service, the last service of the year, this gathering, God, we want to take this moment to acknowledge your goodness, to say thank you. We also want to take this moment, God, to pray for our families, our friends. God, thank you for watching over them. And those of us that lost someone this year, God, we pray for comfort. We pray for, for peace in our hearts. For those still mourning someone that they've lost, those still hurting for a traumatic, perhaps a hurtful experience this year, we pray for comfort. Pray for peace. Father, as we put an end to this year, in the context of this gathering, Father, we want to dedicate 2018 unto you. Father, as a, as a, as a pastor here, Father, I want to just hand over 2018 to you. How can we be your hands, how can you be your feet? Not only on individual, on an individual level, but as a church, as a gathering, as your body. Father, I pray that you would give us ideas, that you would give us a heart so that we can go out and as a church, as a body, do your work as you will. And I just thank you, God, for this moment. I bless every single one of the young men and women that are sitting in this room today. I bless their entire year, God. I pray that they would find your call in their lives throughout the year. That they would be strengthened by you, that they would be encouraged by you. That Holy Spirit, you would lead them in all that they do. Some will go on to college. Some will become, will go another year in school. And Father, I just pray for your guidance and for your mighty hand to protect them. Be with them. And I pray that their lives would serve your purpose, God, every day of this upcoming 2018. So we surrender our hearts to you, God. We give you this moment. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And amen. Guys, we are officially done for the year.